So Rob, we're talking about big magical moments here and how to take a great song and make an indelible moment. Talk a little bit about what you do, how you got started, and then, then we're gonna talk about giving some advice to how our members can design some great moments of their own. Well, Renny, uh, I wasn't always gonna be, you know, behind the lighting console. At one point in my life, I was gonna be on the stage. And uh, this is in the time in the 90s and the late 80s when, you know, it wasn't necessarily all about the music or how great the music was, it was all about the show. So you got to keep in mind, I was pretty young, uh, seventh, eighth grade. Uh, so instead of actually practicing our instruments and learning how to, you know, be awesome, we were going to make cool lighting shows happen so that we could get to the top that way. Sure. We were jumping a fence at a junkyard and uh, stealing car headlamps because that's what it all looked like to us. And we would take them home, plug them in, they would explode because they're 12 volt DC. Mm. And, um, you know, long story short, we got caught. I got assigned community service in a theater. The guy at the theater, uh, you know, I was scraping bubble gum off a chair one day and I saw him hanging some lights and I was like, man, how come your lights don't explode when you plug them in? And he goes, well, what do you mean? And I explained to him what I was doing and he immediately told me how to make the car headlamps work if we wired them in series, you know, 10 of them. So we went, got some so more So you went headlamps. back to the scene of the crime to get some <laughs> more fucking headlights. Yeah, thanks for your clarification, but yes, yeah. we did. <laughs> Thankfully you didn't have Facebook where you would have posted the crime on your page. Carry on. Yeah. So, you know, from there, continue to work here for free. Uh, we'll let you borrow some lights. And I immediately became disinterested in the music and just totally got bit by the lighting bug. Got it. Okay. I was a stagehand, going to college, you know, and then moving to Chicago and uh, working for one of the greatest lighting companies that ever existed. Got it. Love it. Okay. So let me ask you this, Rob. Let me do a little promoting of Rob Gibson. Tell our folks here some of the bands you've worked with over the years, and then I want you. To, then we'll talk about you know you giving some advice about how to get those moments. Who are some of the folks you work with? Well, I started out small with a, a Chicago band that was willing to take a chance on me called Alkaline Trio. They uh, they were kind of in a position where they wanted to move things to the next level and really make it you know like a full on production. Uh, that was right around 2004 with the release of the Crimson album, and then uh, I kind of got. Uh, I started working for My Chemical Romance, and that led to Panic of the Disco, which at the time was a you know a large arena act, and then uh, that led into a band called Incubus, and then I was started with the Deftones, and it's just been on and on from there. If you guys have ever been out to an Incubus show, um, that what what's happening on the stage is always entertaining. But I'm here to tell you that one of the the second most interesting thing or or fun thing to watch is watching my friend Rob. Gibson behind the lighting board because he is into the show. Boom, hitting those lights. Talk about, Rob, how you use rhythm and all that stuff in your work to get those great moments. Well, for me, for me, you know, the, the key objective of any lighting show, first and foremost, is to light the performers, right? Yeah, the, the light most, the band. Light the band. The people came to see the band, so you're directing the focus or the attention to the stage. And then, and then from there, I always find that it's the percussive rhythms, you know, the rhythm section of the band that allows me to find the accents or the hits or the big freezes or the stop melodies and I derive the mood. So that's where I steer my color and all of that attention from. Got it. Got it. Okay. So let me ask you this, Rob. So we are last week on, or Monday on the show, we talked about getting gigs and practicing and so forth and so on. The reality of it is, is that most of our members, certainly at the outset, are not going to be playing big theaters and arenas with a, with a whole big lighting setup that's designed for their show. You've, been more, you've worked at clubs at, at the square one level. If you were going to give some advice today for our musician friends out there that are trying to design their own big moments, what would you tell them and how should they go about getting the best look on their show when they go and play that first club gig? Well, here, here's the thing. You guys are going to arrive and you're not going to have any lighting staff or any lighting equipment, right? So you're completely relying on whatever the venue of that day has. The first thing foremost you should do is talk to the person who's going to be running the lighting board. And you should meet as a band to figure out, you know, there's, I always tell people there's two different shows happening. There's the show that's on stage, you know, that I have to provide a minimal amount of light so that people can see pedal boards or, you know, you can't put a strobe light up somebody's retina and just totally kill them unless they want that. Um, but, you know, engage the local lighting person. That person probably does 10 shows a week or so, 
you know, matinees and, and evening shows, and nobody ever really, they will tell you they don't get the respect that they deserve. So if you approach them with a set list and you've got your moments and you guys have talked about what you need, you know, tell them, hey, in between songs, I need a little more light so I can see my pedal board. Or, hey, you know, there's a big ripping guitar solo in this song. It comes two thirds of the way through. You know, not every day that person is going to be like, yeah, yeah, awesome. But I would say 70 to 90 percent of the time, because you engaged them and gave them some respect and provided them with a set list and maybe even some music to hear it once, you know, because they're going to do that that night without ever, ever hearing your music that you've been playing and developing for the last, you know, however many years. Yeah, it's great advice. And you bring up something there that that our friend Mr. Captain Kircher talked about the other day, too. And you can file it broadly under, uh, under the umbrella of having good manners, making things personal. And the fact of the matter is, is as you pointed out, you're going to go through a club, folks, and there's a million bands going through there. And I can tell you from my own experience as a music professional, the people that treated me with a little bit of respect, that, that maybe went out of their way to convince me that they gave a shit, uh, are the people that I actually went out and did a little bit extra. You go into a club, everybody's going to give you the minimum level of commitment for sure. Um, to get beyond the call of duty takes a, a very personal approach. And, and, and I think that's what Rob is talking about there. Um, Rob, let me ask you this. Now, you've talked to the musicians out there who are building those moments, and I hope you folks were paying attention. There are folks out there that want to go and do what you do, right? Uh, yeah. if, if you were giving advice to a young uh, person out there that wants to become part of, of a road crew, that wants to be card, become part of the band's production, what advice would you give them? Well, you know, you got to start at the bottom. You can't graduate from some, you know, program and 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 know all of the, the ins and outs. You know, one of the things that I attribute to being able to craft my show is I always know the mechanical workings of the gear that I'm specifying. So I know everything that fixture can do. And then sometimes I can work with manufacturers then to make it do things it wasn't designed to do and then come up with something cool. Because unfortunately, as much as I want to, you know, sell you on the fact that I can make it look like it's never been done before, it's probably been done before. But, you know, you got to start the bomb and always have an eager attitude. You're going to encounter a multitude of you know, different personalities on the road that may take a liking to you, may not. But you've always just got to have perseverance and a great can-do attitude. And that'll, that'll get you anywhere you want to go. Important stuff, folks. If you want to look good out there and you want to leave a lasting impression, um, there, all of this stuff comes together. And as you get further along in your career, you can go from what Rob described, which is just making friends and doing the best you can, to having a, a system, ultimately, you hope, that you can have everything dialed in and you sit down with a guy like Rob Gibson before the tour starts and you get a whole game plan together and you talk about all the tricks that you can provide and, and, and make something special so that you can get your big indelible moment like I got from the Rolling Stones. And I'm sure they're sitting there today, Rob, concocting some freaking huge ass gags to work with again. So, Rob, thanks for joining us. I hope to see you again soon um, yeah. uh, out Anytime. on the road. 